Neil, well done on the award. Um, what was changed in the team when you kicked on? That's eight wins in a row. Uh, just, you know, we got more uh, consistent performances. Uh, I don't think the level of performance is where we can get to. I think there's more to come from the team, but certainly the quality and the mentality of the team. You know, having suffered a you know, heavy disappointment when we lost to Fern Varos, you know, the reaction to that was has been absolutely fantastic. Um, we're keeping clean sheets now, you know, it's four in a row. Uh, so we've tidied that up to a certain degree and we're scoring goals. We score goals in every game and we've, we've been dominating possession. So there's a lot of positives to take out of this run. But more than anything, it's just the players' desire and will to win games, you know, under immense pressure. They've handled it brilliantly. Well, about Don Diego, Neil, how long have you been tracking him and um, how much of a coup do you think it is to, to get a guy who's played at the World Cup for Uruguay? Yeah, I admire him very much. You know, I watched him in the World Cup and I thought he had an outstanding World Cup. Uh, and they're playing in a very good Uruguayan team, you know, with great players. And, you know, he looked very comfortable in that company. So we've been tracking him for a long time. We tried to get him in this time last year. Couldn't do it. Um, but I've been a big admirer of his for a long time. So to get that deal over the line is fantastic business from the board, from the club. Um, the players made a you know real positive you know signs to come here. He's, he looks really happy to be here. I haven't spoken to him last night, and I think he will just add you know more quality and you know inspiration to the team. Up to speed, isn't he? He's obviously not played this season. I think his last game was in July. I'm thinking about when you might see him in action. And can you just clarify: Will he be available to play against AC Milan in the group stages? Yes. As far as I'm aware, he will be, yeah, and he will be, uh, you know, ready for the Rangers game as well. You know, he's been training. Obviously, he's not played much for Milan so far, but um, he's fit and he'll be available for the the next games. Just final one for me, Neil. Then you had a few, quite a few players. In fact, thirteen went out in this window. Six come in overall. Do you see yourself as being a stronger unit now? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we wanted to tidy the squad up. I think we've done that. I think we've brought you know real quality in. Um, delighted with the the strength and depth that we have now, as was evident on Sunday when we made the changes to you know help us win the game. So now we've kept all our you know main assets in the, the squad and prized possessions, if you want to call them that. You know, I think it's been a really good window for us in terms of bringing players in and keeping the players that we wanted. What was it you saw in Diego that you thought he was the right fit for Celtic? He's a very good defender. I think he's got great um, quality in on the ball. I think he's um, he's very tenacious. I think he's got great endurance, very fit, and I, again, he's got great desire to make things happen. Um, but I, I like his tenacity more than anything else. You know, he refuses to to get beaten or give the ball up and. Um, I just think he's a quality player. He's playing at a very high level. You talked the other day about Odson Edward and hoping that you know once the transfer window shut that he'd settle down. Is that something that you're planning to to discuss with him at all? Well, yeah. I mean, we'll have a sit down with him. I mean, obviously he's away in at the national duty now, so probably won't see him till you know the middle or towards the end of next week. But yeah, I think it's important that we we have a chat with him and um, just you know get his mind refocused now on the next. You know, 10 months of the season, it's a huge season. If you look at the games we've got coming up after the international break, they're absolutely mouth-watering. So, you know, we want him back and at his best for us. Is there much you can do really, as a manager in that scenario or is it really all down to, to the player to, to get his mindset back in the right place? Well, I mean, you know, there'll be a lot of people talking in his ear behind the scenes and, you know, I've tried to... You know, I've had a few sit-down one-on-ones with him um, and you have to remember that he's only 22. You know, and he's over here at times on his own. And, you know, we try to give him, you know, that full support. But, uh, you know, he's here. He has to understand that. And he has to understand now that he's a very important player for us going forward. Did you find off any late bids for him, Neil? No. No. Was that a surprise to you then? No, not really. You know, we've... Any interest that... you. You know, we, we may or may not have had was totally rebuffed by the club. You know, we didn't want to sell Odson at any stage. You know, I think we made that clear pretty early on. So, um, you know, the club are very strong on that. 
Are you finished now in the transfer market? Because, of course, you can get out of contract players. Are you still looking in that direction at the moment? No, we're very happy with the squad now. Um, so, I mean, there, is, there may be one or two that may come to us, but, um, you know, it's not on the radar at the minute. I think, um, you know, you don't want to bloat the squad. I think we've got, you know, a squad of maybe 25, 26, which is, you know, pretty strong, good depth, and will be used because we'll need that as you know, between now and January. Thank Neil, you. it's Keith Downey at Sky here, down in Newcastle. Um, good to see you. Um, can I just um, ask you about the transfer window in general? How difficult have you found it with the, with the pandemic? Has is, is it made everything a little bit more difficult? Um, it's a good question. It, it's just swings and roundabouts, really. You know, the, the extension to the, the transfer window can always sort of, you know, make it a little bit disconcerting, you know, just that, you're eating into your season, like we're nine or ten games into the season now and the window's still open. So there's always that sort of concern in the back of your mind that, you know, bids may come in for certain players. Um, I don't think there's... I think clubs have been pretty shrewd. They haven't gone out and spent the money that we've seen in, in past windows. Um, and maybe they're looking at, you know, the longer term once we get through this pandemic. So it's been just like any normal... Or run of the mill window, really. You know, you're always looking to bring players in. That's proved difficult at times, but fruitful in the end. And obviously, keeping hold of our players was a big, big plus for us as well. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. You said a moment ago that you managed to keep hold of your, your prized assets. Did you have to fend off any interest for any of your other players um, out with Edward towards the end of the window? Look, there was interest in, you know, a couple of players, but nothing that would have even tempted the club to consider, you know, and like I said, the, the, lack, the lack of money or the lack of real sort of oomph around the transfer window was displayed in, in the interest that we had. There was nothing concrete that, you know, made us, or made me or made the club, you know, stop and think, yeah, maybe we should have a look at this. There was nothing mutually concrete on the table for any of the players. There was something that was floating about really late last night about in Cham. Was was there anything in that about him potentially? Again, you know, just a bit of interest, you know, but nothing that um, we were, we were, you know, interested in doing for a start, and nothing that would have tempted us either. Neil, um, Tom Rogic nearly moved at, at one or two points in the window, but is he is he nearing full fitness, and he's very much part of your plans? Yes, he is. Yeah, he. he um, He's been training well now the last few weeks. He's had, you know, knee and ankle problems, but you know, at the minute we're we're he's good. He's um he's in the building, you know, for the next couple of weeks now, so we can get some more, you know, physical work into him and he will definitely play a part. Um obviously there was a, a bid in for him, it was accepted, but the deal fell through and he's here with us now and I'm delighted. You know, he came on, played very well for the twenty minutes at the weekend and that's a huge plus for us to have him. You know, if he's fit and fair, and he's a he's a wonderful player to have around the place. Just just to clarify, with that left wing back position, you were looking to strengthen for the last couple of weeks. Was Lax out your your number one target? Well, you've you've plenty of uh, options, but you know he he was one I wanted last year. We couldn't do it for you know whatever reasons. And when the opportunity came up again, believe it or not, there was well, you should believe it. There was a lot of interest in him from elsewhere around the continent. But he made it clear this time that he wanted to come and play for us. So once that was made clear to us, then, you know, it was a question of, you know, necessity to get the deal done. And I'm absolutely delighted to have done that. Just finally, from me, what are your plans over the international break in terms of preparing the team for the, for the next set of fixtures? Um, that's a good question. We've got a lot of them away. So, you know, we'll, the boys are off today. They'll be in tomorrow up until the weekend, short weekend. And then, you know, we're waiting to hear what the government restrictions are going to be as well um, this afternoon. You know, there's talk of a, you know, a circuit break, you know, for the whole of society. So obviously we'll be, you know, analysing that and watching that very, very closely. And then it'll just be a, a normal week. We don't get the rest of the players. Someone will play, possibly play Wednesday week, tomorrow week. And then we won't get them back until Thursday Second day recovery on the Friday, so we're going to have very, very little time to work with those players. So we're just, you know, monitoring all the situations, all the players in the individual camps, and 
their individual games as we go along. Neil, it's Jonathan at the BBC here. Congratulations on the award. As you mentioned there, we're all waiting to hear uh, from Nicola Sturgeon on what the Scottish Government decide to do over the next couple of weeks. And as you mentioned, the circuit breaker might happen. Any concerns in your mind uh, that football could see another pause in Scotland? Um, well, I hope not. Um, I think, you know, we've been in a sports bubble. Um, so that's given us sort of... Um, the privilege to travel, you know, travel abroad, play, we've played in Sarajevo, we've played in Riga, you know, we've had, you know, constant and consistent, you know, rounds of testing where, you know, everyone here, players and staff have come, come through it. So we're really tight in the bubble. So we're hoping that, you know, football will still be allowed to proceed. And if it is two weeks, you know, we're probably looking at, um, Maybe just the one game in that circuit break, which should probably be the game at the weekend. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, there's been a lot of talk about Scottish government's attitude to football recently. How would you sum that up? Um, just what I've always maintained, you know, the, the sooner we can get supporters back into the the stadiums, the better. You know, again, I'm seeing, you know, f- football in Germany with crowds in and... Um, Again, some American football, you know, so I watch a lot of sports and just interested to see how other sports and other countries are dealing with it. I do think, you know, Salt Lake Park is, you know, perfectly set up for, for dealing with the safety, health and safety protocols that are demanded from the government. And, um, you know, we will still try and bang the drum constantly to get supporters into the stadium sooner rather than later. Do you feel confident that the Scottish government is on Scottish football's side? I can't comment on that, Jonathan. I, I, I don't know. You need to ask the Scottish Government that. Just, Neil, one, just reading some uh, comments there from Charlie Nicholas, who was suggesting that you, you might be annoyed waking up this morning um, about your business dealings in the, the transfer market and saying that Diego Laxalt was a, a cheap option for the club. Is that something you'd dispute? Uh, 100%. How would Charlie know, you know the, the dealings that you know, we have with AC Milan, who's one of the biggest... Cl- Listen... If we had signed Messi and Ronaldo, Charlie still would have found fault with it. You know, he's been just a negative uh, bang in the drum about the club for for years. You know, we switch off to it. I've, I'm not aware of it. You know, I've, I woke up this morning absolutely delighted. Delighted with the squad of players that we've got and certainly with the, the Laxell signing. And I think we've come out of the window very, very strong and we've got great depth. So, look, people can throw stones at the club. There's no merit. There's no foundation. There's no substance to it. We've kept all our best players. We've kept Edward. We've kept Ayer. We've kept Christie's. We've kept the McGregor's. All these players here are big assets for the club. And that's been a difficult thing to do. Um, when you consider the, the financial situation that a lot of clubs are in. We've also added international quality. You know, players you have bedded in straight away. You, you know, Barkas is doing a great job. Duffy's been exceptionally good. You know, Turnbull, a great young talent. He will flourish here. You know, I could go on and on about the players we're saying, and I'm thrilled to get Laxalt over the line as well. So, Charlie doesn't speak for me. He doesn't think for me. And um, to be honest with you, it, it doesn't resonate one bit here. Does it make it more annoying, Neil, that it's come from a former Celtic player? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's too many ex-Celtic players over the years have constantly been trying to, I don't know, create this negative narrative around the club. We are absolutely flying. You know, we're winning all our games. We've won 11 trophies in a row. We're not selling anyone. You know, normally over the years we've sold, sold Dembele, we've sold Tierney, you know, we've sold other players. This window we've kept them all. And I think that's credit to the board and Shows how strong we are at the minute. Just finally for me, Neil, see, remember what you said after you said after Ferenc Varos, did you have to get any guys' heads that might have been uh, turned one way to refocus? Did you play a key role there? Try to. You know, I'm not convinced they fully did it, you know, but I'm hoping <laughs> now that that's going to be the case going forward. You know, there's no question that um, yep. some players can lose their focus or agitate when it's all this talk and speculation surrounding them. But um, now that the window's shut, you know, I'm hoping they'll all settle down and, and focus totally on the job in hand now, which is very, very exciting for us. 
sorry, Neil, with the additions you've brought in, do you think you'll try and stick to three at the back? Or does it allow you to be even more fluid and play different formations in certain games? Well, yeah, I mean, we can you play three at the back. It's, you know, a formation a system that's working for us very well. Um, you know, particularly, we need the strikers to be fully fit. You know, we've got four in the building, you know, Griff and Albion at the minute are still trying to get up to full fitness. Um, but it can work very well when you get two really fit and hungry strikers on the pitch. We can also go 4-3-3. You know, Lexel can, you know, play left back or left wing back. Um, you've got strong midfield players in there, you know, uh, to pick from as well. Two sitters or a one or one and two. One sitter and two attacking players. Um, and we get Jamesy hopefully fit in a few weeks. You know, we can go with the, the wingers. Johnson will come back into that as well. I think these guys get forgotten about when they're, they're not, you know, playing and in the forefront of people's minds. But yeah, we've got them. Um, we've got the ammunition to go for. We've got the ammunition to go three. And when, after the international break, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, after the international break, you've obviously got a busy schedule coming up. How crucial is the squad depth? Well, it's very crucial. I mean, it's already played a a big part in the. We've just come out of a block of seven games between the you know the international you know both internationals. That, the previous one and this one coming up. We've won them all and everyone's contributed. So I'm delighted with that. I don't, you know, I'm not big on rotating all the time, but I think it was a necessity, you know, just after coming out of a long lockdown and, you know, a stop start to the season, we've used the squad as best we can and we've been successful. You know, I, I, ideologically, you want to have a settled team and pick the same 11 every week, but that's that's not going to be the case with the amount of games that we've got coming up after you know, this international break, you know, got so many huge games that's going to take a demand on the players and, you know, hopefully we have the squad to cope with that now. So, Neil, I was just want to check how did the scan results come back for James? When, he, when is he look, looking for a targeted return? Yeah, he's got a, you know, minor stress fracture in the ankle and it's quite remarkable really that, you know, he's played with that for a few games as well, but obviously it's it got to the point where it was impossible. So uh, at first thought it didn't show up on the scan, but he had a CT scan and it's just shown, you know, a slight stress fracture. So it's going to take a bit of, you know, a week or two to settle down and um, then obviously he has to rehab. Uh, but, you know, the prognosis of the length of time out will still be the same. It's roughly about four to six weeks. Okay, cheers. And Neil, one more from me. A uh, great moment for Lee Griffiths, obviously, at the weekend. I take it there was no late phone call from Steve Clark? Not that I'm aware of. And I wouldn't be picking up the phone for that one anyway. <laughs> We've got enough of my players there. It's all right. Good stuff. Cheers, Neil. Cheers.